All right, another little bit of work going on in the shop here, in the new shop. Got this unit here from Baker. <clears throat> it is supposed to be made by Manitowoc, but I'm not sure. Looks like one. So we're gonna hook this ice maker up so she can stop buying a bag of ice every morning. So when we roughed in the building, you know, this will go above the countertop. So we got that down there for the pump and the ice maker. Here's our water supply and that's probably not glued yet. There's our drain. So I'm gonna set a little condensate pump right there and pump it into that drain and hook this water supply to the ice maker itself. Now, pretty much gonna hook this up with stuff we had laying around. I did stop uh, on the way in this morning and bought that. Um, I'm not gonna hook a quarter inch line up. I'm gonna hook a a three-eighths line up. So what I'm gonna do is use a compression valve, put that on. That's gonna be our supply line and our shutoff right there. I'll use the hose out of this and uh, I'll use this 90 degree three-eighths pipe thread to creates compression in the back of the machine here. So let's pull it out and get a look at it. One thing that I have not yet obtained and figured out is what I'm going to do for a safety here. And what I mean by safety here is what is going to tell this uh, machine not to make any more ice if the uh, pump fails. So I had thought about putting a pan here and putting this inside the pan and putting a float switch in it and, you know, also wiring it through this safety and shutting off the uh, the water or shutting off the power and I think a relay that shut off the power would would do one thing I mean that would uh, that would stop the ice maker from filling up or making you know further ice but I'm not an ice maker guy. I'm not a refrigeration guy. I don't really know much about these machines. Uh, I've had a couple of them before, but they've always had a drain in the floor and it's just always been a safety, you know, it's in a safe spot that no matter what kind of failure, at least it wouldn't flood my whole building. And so if I'm gone for the weekend or something and this thing fails, I'd hate to have water everywhere. I mean, there's no way to account for every single failure. You know, pump failure, we could cut something off or, you know, but if one of these lines, but you know, uh, the machine fails inside to the point that it's just letting water fly through and fill up the bin. And you know, I don't know what happens here. So I'm a little bit of a uh, deer in the headlights, but I'm gonna hook this thing up anyway regardless so i'm gonna do the pump first and uh, then we'll hook up the water line
And I'm gonna point this up to where if any of these fittings had a little bit of leakage, just you know, if it if it was if it was facing down, it obviously could soak through some of these threads or whatever. So I'm not near as worried about it with it pointed up. I know you plumbers out there are immediately going to say you didn't use any primer, you didn't use any cleaner, blah, 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 blah. And I will say, no, I didn't. It is correct. I did not. So, I just feel like when you got All new PVC stuff. The glue is going to work just fine. That's just my opinion. Uh, might be smart. For me to do is to cut the water off. I don't know what these people are doing blocking up my parking lot, but they're not really bothering me, so let them do it. Somebody came up here the other day and ran over the water meter and look at it. The uh, lid won't go on it anymore. They have seriously uh, trashed the can that goes around it or whatever the enclosure you call it is, whatever you call it. So I told them about it and I guess they're gonna get in here and fix it, I don't know. And as you can see, we have not yet set our office up and all this stuff out here is clutter city. But we are slowly by surely getting somewhere. Slowly but surely. So let's go in here and open a cold line and hope that uh, we don't get a bunch of water over here when we cut this. I don't really like doing that that way, but I'd rather have just a clean piece of slick, shiny copper, but I ain't got all day to play around with a water line. Point this kind of down catty cornered at this corner a little bit and let this line come in there like that and go over here to the machine so that'll be kind of going in that direction
this actually you don't obviously you don't use the ferrule or anything there's a rubber gasket in there and basically just like a toilet line or a sink line so it just threads right on to the compression fitting go to the other end and look at the fittings on the machine. But that's how we're going to leave this. So here, is the drain right there from the tank. So I'm going to need a half inch uh, fitting there and a hose to run over into the condensate pump. Like I say, we don't need the ferrule or the cap. Um, and our hose will go directly on that fitting. So this is the water inlet, and I'm going to put a little bit of uh, Teflon tape on it. Don't use Teflon tape very often. Um, you know, my guys are always asking for the yellow tape, the yellow Teflon tape for gas lines. And, uh, you know, I just, that's just not what I use. Um, I'm just an old pipe dope guy from, from way back. Just don't have a problem with pipe dope. I do not like that blue pipe dope that everybody likes. I personally do not think pipe dope is really for being a thread sealant. Even though it says it on there, I think the tapered fittings are what seals and getting them tight enough. <clears throat> but that blue stuff just gets everywhere and if it gets on anything clothing flooring any kind of anything it ruins it it's there permanently okay so the water line is ready to connect now let's find something to make this half inch drain go into the pump. And at that point, we'll be ready to turn this thing on and let it start making ice. Alright, one of our guys came in here and just went on and on and on. I can't believe you're not putting it in a pan, blah blah blah, okay. So I finally let him help me lift it over here. Now we got the pump in the pan and the unit. So I'm gonna take this half inch Street 90 PVC 
and put it in here and since we're sitting in a pan and everything's rigid together instead of fooling with them hoses I'll just pipe this rigid over there to the pump and it'll just Thusly. Cutting that off because I need a little old piece to help me turn this with. That was a lucky cut. That little piece right there came out exactly the right length. So I'm going to notch the bottom of it. Like that. Just so that in case it sits down actually in the bottom of that pump. It doesn't block it off. Okay, let's get this thing in place into the back of the to the back of the pan where it's going to go. So I'm going to go ahead and glue this in, these together. this and glue it right in and we'll be rigid the whole way this real good and make sure I got it positioned exactly. Just like that. 
And the instruction said not to add a trap. So we're not gonna add a trap. And that is slightly downhill. So the only thing I gotta do, I did not tighten that last. Joint right there on the uh, water line. Now, right. I tell you, they are still working that new pole they put up. They have been out here all day. I had a couple places to run and came back. I figured they'd be gone. So that's an all day job right there. So let's go over here and find out if everything's okay. tells me get that paperwork out of there just in case something's wrong here I'm just filling up is what I'm assuming See any water anywhere? I don't see any. Like I say, I don't know much about these things. Really don't know anything about them. I'm gonna wait a minute and let that pressure rise, let it get full. see any water anywhere and the filling has stopped and nothing is under any pressure anywhere So, let's plug this thing in. And read the book. I wonder if I did that backwards. I know I didn't take this off of this side. So I had all that cardboard across the top for nothing.
So now we're ready to get our, we'll set a refrigerator right here. And I think a stool or two will sit right here and microwave and a little, you know, loaf of bread and a couple of things there to stand here and make yourself a sandwich. I found some really cool looking pieces of countertop that we can cut and frame and put right there. So I was happy about that. And we got room to get in here and sit the cooler right there and scoop it full every morning. I'm probably not going to ever carry a cooler or anything, but Connie does for the installers. So we need to wipe this thing clean and get all this glue and whatever off of it. Compressor start. So it sounds pretty good for what I know. All right, I read every bit of this uh, initial operation, startup, etc. Pretty much everything is automatic. Um, Pre-adjusted by the factory. There's a little bit to check. Um, you know, the thickness, water level settings. So it tells you really uh, very detailed how to, how to set all that. So we're going to look at all that inside. And uh, it, it tells you exactly what to do. And I think that's just the thickness of the cube and, you know, how well they break apart. It should all be okay, but we're going to look at it. We're going to follow these instructions. That may take a few minutes. All right, here's where I'd like to have a couple of ideas from some of you guys that uh, have some refrigeration experience, and I know a lot of you do, and I actually do not. Um, what would you do to protect the failure and you know, water damage situation here. So I, obviously I can plug this pan and I'll do that. Obviously we can put a float switch that allows 110. We can put a float switch to the, uh, uh, to the pump over there, the failure float to where, you know, if the pump overflows and doesn't pump out and it hits that top you know, everybody's seen that. Um, the two spades right here. Um, that can be used to, to break something. I, I don't know, I haven't paid attention if this tolerates 120 volt or just low voltage. Um, I know the float switches that we put in the pans for our HVAC systems claim they tolerate uh, high voltage but I just don't know how much, like a compressor running or what. So I'm gonna let you guys make some suggestions to me. There's two or three things to protect here. Number one, if the pump fails and doesn't pump the water out, it's gonna fill this pan up. Uh, number two, if the machine itself fails, if something breaks inside or whatever and it starts to put water someplace other than in the drain pipe, out into the pan you know what can we do to shut this down now there'd be a certain amount of failures that could happen that we would really need this water supply to shut off so this is not really my field i could obviously read and study up but uh, there's an awful lot of communication from you guys that watch the videos and i really appreciate all of it um, some of it is criticism, some of it is constructive, and some of it is, uh, you know, just aggravating. And so I don't even, I don't even allow those, those comments to post. But um, a lot of you regulars and a lot of you guys that, that just watch and don't comment may be 
you have some experience in the refrigeration field and you'd like to give me your ideas on, on what I should do for safeties here. Because this setup right here could definitely uh, fail a couple of, uh, you know, different ways. And I could walk in one Monday morning and water be everywhere. And there's carpet right on the other side of that wall, so I really don't want that. So please leave a comment below to let me know what some of you think are some good ideas to protect this system from failure. We'll check on it in a few minutes and see if the bin's full of ice. It sounds good, but I don't hear any ice dropping anywhere in there yet. I said it would shut it down if I open this, so I'm not going to open it for a while. But I hear water trickling around in there. So I wonder if everything's working right. Give it a minute. I'm gonna do uh, like that thing on Zach's game show used to say, phone a friend. I'm gonna call up a buddy of mine that uh, works on these things and does refrigeration. Just pick his brain for a minute. See what he says. Thanks.